हेलो गाइस, आई एम बैक विथ इंडेस चार्ट रिविजन एंड दैट टू इन इंग्लिश आई होप यू हैव वॉच्ड माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑन इंडेस चार्ट रिविजन एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द इंडेस चार्ट रिविजन ऑन इंडेस 33 फ्रॉम माय चार्ट बुक व्हाट इज द चार्ट बुक लेट मी शो यू वंस अगेन दिस इज द चार्ट बुक यू कैन परचेज दिस चार्ट बुक फ्रॉम अवर वेबसाइट आई एम गिविंग यू द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन फॉर परचेज वन मोर थिंग गाइज आई एम ट्राइंग वेरी हार्ड एंड I am trying really very hard to record these lectures in English, especially for South Indian students, so that each and every part of the India uh, may get help from these kind of lectures. Okay, so just I what what I need just I need a uh, your feedback in your in the in the comment uh, uh, comment box of this video. I hope you guys like the lecture and will give uh, give me the feedback. about these lectures okay so let's start indias chart revision for indias 33 earnings per share this is a very important topic and i covered the entire topic in two pages okay overall if you can see big and small overall there are seven points and uh, overall if there are seven points i can expect i don't know but i can expect that i'll be able to cover the entire portion in one and a half hour okay without question discussion but if you want me to discuss questions not an issue i will give you the important list of uh, uh, important list of questions from of all the indias and in which you will get the list of indias 33 important questions also one more thing in the description below in the description below apart from this chart revision lecture for indias 33 i am uh, uh, i am i am sharing with you the detailed indias 33 video detailed indias 33 video for each and everything co uh, covered as well as the questions are discussed also so if you want that detailed one in english you can refer my that particular detailed video but for exams for before exam revision i recommend you to just watch this lecture only okay so let's start india 33 earnings per share we all know that there are two type of earning per share uh, basic earning per share and diluted earning per share first of all let us check the presentation requirement of eps whether it is a basic or diluted so as far as consolidated financial statements of the group entity where parent and subsidies are involved we have to show the consolidated eps only of the entire group but as far as the separate financial statements of the parent company only parent company has to present the separate eps only and not the consolidated eps okay it's not the important thing for the exams next uh one more thing as far as the presentation purpose is concerned in the profit and loss schedule schedule 3 profit and loss format we need to show basic as well as diluted earning per share in three categories basic earning per share diluted earning per share for continuing operations and then for discontinued operations it should be discontinued guys the spelling should uh, should be like discontinued discontinued so discontinued operation and the eps for the total business so you have to divide the eps into three categories eps for continuing operation separately eps for discontinued operations and eps for total business so this is the presentation point which is not relevant for your exams now now this is the basic thing formula i uh, i i am assuming that everyone must know the must know the formula but what is the big, biggest important point in the formula is when you calculate the earning per share for consolidated financial statements See, simply the formula is earning attributable to equity shareholder divided by weighted average number of shares. Everybody knows. But as far as consolidated financial statements are concerned, consolidated financial statement that means financial statements of the group of the companies. When you when you calculate the numerator, net profit loss attributable to equity shareholders of parent, what it should be? It should be net profit loss from the SFS of parent company plus parent's share in the net profit loss of the subsidiary company. let me just give you one example suppose uh, earnings from pnl of holding company is 5 crore earnings in pnl of subsidiary company let us say 3 crore h has 80% investment subsidiary now when you calculate the earnings for the purpose of cfs consolidated financial statements so the earning would be earnings for cfs would be the whole 5 crore this one plus 3 crore into 80% 
बिकॉज पेरेंट हैज एटी परसेंट शेयर इन द पी एंडल ऑफ सब्सिडी इन द अर्निंग ऑफ सब्सिडी द रेस्ट बिलोंग्स टू एनसीआई सो वेन एवर वी कैलकुलेट ईपीएस फॉर द कंसोलिडेट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट वी शुड नॉट इंक्लूड द एनसीआई अर्निंग बस मेक श्योर दैट दैट वी शुड नॉट इंक्लूड द एनसीआई अर्निंग सो द अर्निंग शुड बी लाइक दिस थ्री करोड़ इंटू एटी परसेंट टू पॉइंट फोर प्लस फाइव इट शुड बी सेवन पॉइंट फोर करोड़ सो अर्निंग फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ कंसोलिडेट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट ईपीएस इट शुड बी सेवन पॉइंट फोर आई होप यू मस्ट got this point and that is the reason it is written net profit loss attributable to the shareholders of parent company only not the shareholders the other shareholders of subsidiary company okay i hope you got you must got the point if you want you can take the screenshot 3 2 1 okay <laughs> whenever you want to take the screenshot just pause the lecture and take the screenshot okay now let us come to the next basic point regarding the numerator that means how we used to calculate the earning see everybody know everybody know that uh, if we talk about earning na if we talk about earning oh oops 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 Let, one second hmm. if we talk about earning so earning everybody know ebit minus interest whenever you calculate interest na you should calculate the interest based on effective rate of interest iri financial instrument chapter Minus earning before tax, then minus tax expense. Whenever you write tax expense, you must know that current tax as well as deferred tax must be written. Then you will get EAT. After EAT, you should minus the preference dividend. Now, whenever we minus the preference dividend, please understood. If the preference shares are cumulative, then you always deduct the preference dividend. Preference preference shares if they are cumulative, then you should always deduct the preference dividend. But if the preference shares are non cumulative non cumulative that means the dividend is not mandatory the dividend is not mandatory to be paid so you you must deduct the dividend only when it is declared so in case of cumulative preference shares you should always de uh, uh, deduct the dividend amount from this portion from this portion okay but you should deduct the div dividend amount only if it is declared when such such preference shares are non cumulative so in case of cumulative deduct the dividend always in case of non cumulative deduct the dividend only when it is declared okay sir what we should assume in case uh, the question doesn't specify whether they are cumulative or non cumulative always assume uh, cumulative always assume cumulative then the second thing if preference share is classified as financial liability as per india's 109 then dividend recognized as finance cost shall be deducted now try to understand sometimes the preference share capital can be classified as financial liability why because preference share capital is a redeemable so technically uh, there there's a there's a uh, there's a mandatory outflow is required to redeem the preference share capital so it is as good as the financial liability and when you treat the preference share capital as a financial liability technically you have to record the uh, interest on such financial liability as per the effective rate of interest method so technically even though you are paying dividend but you have to deduct the interest on such financial liability as per india's 109 based on effective rate of interest i hope you got the point last but not the least uh, while calculating the numerator that means the earning attributable to equity shareholders always reduce the premium the premium paid on redemption of preference shares suppose you in the current year you redeemed the preference shares yes Uh, and you redeem the preference shares at a premium, ten percent premium, and such ten percent premium is a let us say five crore. Now, you may have uh, you may have a uh, written off that five crore premium from security premium account, or you may not have transfer such five crore premium into P and L. Whatever you did in the profit and loss account, that doesn't matter. India's thirty three says, if you want to calculate EPS for the purpose of earnings, you should always reduce the premium. Which you have paid at the time of early redemption or settlement of preference shares. So whenever you settle the preference share, redeem the preference share, always deduct the premium amount from the earnings for the purpose of calculation of NDS. Even though the premium is not even transferred to the profit and loss account. Okay. So make sure, like in this calculation, yeah, here the premium on redemption should be deducted, and then you will get. the earnings for whom for equity shareholders so this is the earning available for equity shareholder the numerator i hope you got the point all right so the third point is also also done clear now come to the fourth point denominator it is the most important part of the entire nds the denominator is very important what is the basic about denominator see we all know that uh, 
uh, while calculating denominator, that means the number of shares, we always do weighted average. Now, why we do weighted average? Suppose on 1st April, we have opening shares 1 lakh. Okay, so into 12 by 12 because the 1 lakh are outstanding during the whole year. On 1st July, there was an issue. There was an issue, issue of 50,000 shares. Now, we issued the shares on 50, uh, on 1st July. So, we make a weighted average of 9 months because July to March, it is a 9 months. So, it is a weighted average. Then, on 1st November, there was a buyback. There was a buyback. On 1st November, there was a buyback. So, buyback of how many numbers? Suppose the buyback of 20,000 numbers. So, buyback means taking back our own shares and giving the capital back. So, it, it should be deducted, 20,000. November, November, December, January, February, March into 5. So, the total of this, the total of this would be the weighted average. So, everybody knows, uh, overall, the, how we used to calculate the weighted average? Like this only, like this only. You can pause the lecture and just take the screenshot, okay? All right. So, weighted average, simply it is like that. But, but now, few important things are there, you should consider for calculating weighted average. Now, First of all, equity shares having different base values or different paid up values. What will you do? Suppose there are different kind of equity shares with different base values or different paid up values. Then what will you do? Let us take an example. Suppose uh, on 1st April, I have a opening balance of 1 lakh shares of 10 each. Of 10 each. Okay. And on 1st July, I issued, I issued 60,000 numbers of 20 each now the face values are different by there are face values are different what you will do not an issue either you can convert the shares into 10 rupee face value or convert 1 lakh shares into 20 rupees face value or there is another point calculate like this 1 lakh into 10 60,000 into 20 okay into 12 by 12 because 1 lakh are outstanding from beginning and into July, July, that means into 9 by 12. Now, what is this? 1 lakh, 1 lakh into 10, it should be 10 lakhs rupees because you multiplied it by 10. 60,000 into 20 into 9 by 12. It's 9 lakh rupees. So, it's 19 lakh. You know what? What is this 19 lakh? 19 lakh is weighted average outstanding equity share capital. It is equity share capital. It is not equity number. It is equity share capital. 19 lakh rupees. Equity share capital. 19 lakh rupees is it is. So how you calculate EPS? First, you should calculate earning per rupee. Earning per rupee. First, you should calculate earning per rupee. Suppose your earnings are 50 lakhs. Assumed. 50 lakh divided by 19 lakhs. Now, 19 lakh is the rupee. 50 lakh is a rupee. So, technically it is earning per rupee. Instead of earning per share, we are calculating earning per rupee basically. So, 50 lakh divided by 19 lakh. 50 lakh divided by 19 lakh. It's 2.63. Now, what you will do? Earning per share for 10 rupee. Earning per share for 20 rupee. What you will do? You will just multiply. 2.63 into 10. 2.63 into 20. You will get the EPS. Earning per share. That means 26.3 and 2.63 into 20 that means 52.6 so how to calculate eps first you calculate the earning per rupee for calculating earning per rupee just calculate the weighted average outstanding equity share capital for calculating equity share capital multiply it with the paid up value or face value now here the the face values were different instead of different face values the paid up values can be different suppose both of them are 10 rupee shares but it is it is fully paid and it is 8 paid. The, in the same way, like 1 lakh into fully paid 10 and uh, 60,000 into 8. Like that. So, whenever the face values are different, the, the face values or the paid up values are different, you just calculate the uh, calculate the weighted average outstanding equity capital and then calculate earning per rupee and then multiply it with the face values and paid up values accordingly. You will get the answer. I hope you got, you got, uh, you got the point. Uh, this is how you used to calculate. Calculate the earning per rupee. What is written? Earning per rupee. First, by taking weighted average amount of equity share capital outstanding during the year. Then such EPR, earning per rupee, shall be multiplied to the different paid up values or different face values to get the EPS. For once you got the EPR, multiply it with the face values or paid up values to get the EPS. Now, sir, do we need to consider partly paid shares? See, uh, there are two important characteristics uh, we should understand about partly paid shares. Sometimes, 
नंबर वन समाइम्स पार्टली पेड शेयर आर नॉट एलिजिबल फॉर डिविडेंड अंटिल एंड अनलेस दे आर गेटिंग फुल्ली पेड एंड सेकेंड Sometimes partly paid shares are eligible for dividend, even though they are partly paid, but the, they are they are eligible for dividend only to the extent of their partly paid amount. Suppose company issued a dividend of company announced a dividend of eight uh, percent. Now eight percent should be calculated on the paid up value. Now suppose I have shares, I have shares, uh, uh, I have shares, and I have uh, made a full amount. Now I have a fully paid share, so I will get the dividend eight percent on my ten rupees. Because ten rupees is the uh, full paid up value, and you have the share. Ten rupees is the full paid up value, but your share is partly paid, and still you have just paid five rupees out of ten. You paid five rupees, so company will give you dividend. Will give you also the dividend, but the dividend for you will be calculated eight percent on your on five rupees only. So some uh, sometimes the partly paid shares are not eligible for dividend until they become fully paid, and sometimes the partly paid shares are eligible for the dividend even though they are full uh, partly paid, but they will get the dividend only to the extent of partly paid amount. So what to do? Simple. If they are entitled for dividend, even though they are partly paid, you will consider them in the basic earning per share calculation definitely. And how how you can consider just like this, just like this. Suppose. Uh, there's that there, there's a ten rupee share. It is fully paid. There's a ten rupee share. It is partly paid. But I considered here into ten, uh, into eight. Uh, if I'm considering, that means they are eligible for the dividend. Then, suppose they are not entitled for dividend. Suppose they are not eligible for dividend until they become fully paid. So what you will do until they become fully paid, they are not eligible for dividend. You shall not consider them under the EPS working until they will become fully paid. But at the same time you will consider them under diluted eps working because they will be treated as a potential equity share sir what do you mean by potential equity share potential equity share means any security which will get the earning in the uh, which will which will be entitled who is who is entitled for the earning available for equity shareholder or who will become the equity shareholder in the future so technically currently i am partly paid share and i am not eligible for the earning right now because it is partly paid but once i will be fully paid now i will be eligible for earning also so i am potential equity share so as far as balance sheet date is concerned on balance sheet date i am partly paid not eligible for dividend beps for calculation no 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 i will not consider this partly paid but for the calculation of deps i will consider them understood or not okay so it is also done denominator now few important things are again a uh, few, few more important things are here uh, bonus share split share consolidation it is not so much important technically you see what is the similarity in this bonus share split and share consolidation bonus company issues extra shares out of reserve and surplus no money no cash is raised share split technically the number of shares are increased but the share capital is same consolidation number of shares are reduced but the share capital is same technically in all three things no cash is additionally uh, additionally raised in the company so what india strategy says whenever the company do bonus shares na it should always be assumed that the time wait for bonus share should be twelve months that means whenever the company even like this suppose this is 1st april this is 31st march i have the opening shares of 1 lakh suppose here on 1st of uh, september company issued bonus 1 is to 1 that means 1 lakh but when i while i am doing weighted average now what i will do 1 lakh into 12 by 12 opening and bonus 1 lakh again into 12 by 12 even though the bonus was issued on 1st now september but i will do 12 by 12 why because bonus is issued out of free reserve and free reserve were already in my company since 1st april so technically what is bonus bonus is the capitalization of reserve after issuing bonus the reserves become the cap capital so on 1st september it becomes a reserve become the capital before before 1st september they were already there in the name of reserves so technically bonus was already there in my financial statement in the name of reserve so technically i will do 12 by 12 okay and the same to be done with the share split and share consolidation whenever the company do share split and consolidation in the mid of the year do not consider the old numbers consider the new numbers only okay weighted average date shall be considered from the beginning of the earliest pay that presented even though while calculating the previous year earning per share you have to restate the previous year earning per share considering current bonus current split and current consolidation like in the current year company has issued bonus current year company has issued bonus 
what you have to do you have to recalculate your previous year eps and that is called restated eps by considering current year bonus in the previous years eps also yes this is the fact okay i hope you uh, got the knowledge now equity shares issued under business combination are quite simple business combination means a company who is acquiring the business of another company so one the who is acquiring the business definitely give the pc pc means purchase consideration and then uh, if i if my company is giving the pc in the form of shares so i have issued the shares when i issued the shares so i have to consider those shares in my eps also but now the shares are issued on uh, on different date so from which date the time wait will be taken the time date will be considered from the acquisition date date of acquisition and you know what what is date of acquisition the date of acquisition means the date on which the business was taken over the control was acquired so time wait shall be considered from the date of acquisition reason since earnings are combined from date of acquisition only so if a limited if a limited has acquired b limited on 1st july ha huh, on 1st july so uh, and issued the new shares so the new shares will be considered in the basic earning per share working but the time wait will be taken from 1st july okay so this is also done these are very very simple simple small small things now the last basic point compulsory convertible securities what do you mean by compulsory convertible securities uh, compulsory convertible debentures compulsory convertible preference shares now what is this compulsory convertible debentures and preference shares technically uh, when we issue the compulsory convertible debenture suppose today so today only it is certain that after 5 years i will give you i will redeem these debentures in the form of equity shares i will not give you the cash back okay today i raised raised the money from you okay i raised the money from you i issued the debentures but today only i am telling you that after 5 years so oh, uh, uh, every year i will give you interest not an issue but after 5 year as far as the principal amount is concerned i will not give you the principal amount back in cash the i will convert this principal into fixed number of shares fixed number of shares conversion into fixed so here you write conversion into fixed number of shares equity shares so technically the compulsory convertible securities are where we know that in the future we will give we will we will issue fixed number of equity share india 33 says if the entity has issued compulsory convertible securities where it is fixed that how many number of equity shares will be issued in the future it is already fixed so from very first day from the date of issue of these securities from very first day you will consider them as a share from today only so take a, a for calculating basic earning per share you have to consider these securities in the form of shares from this date only for example suppose suppose uh, 1st april 19 we issued 50000 compulsory we we issued convertible debentures convertible debentures and uh, uh, term is term is 3 years and after 3 years they will be converted converted into into 3 is to 1 now it is mandatory conversion is there so 3 is to 1 matlab there are 50000 debentures in future they will be 150 number of shares so you know what while calculating the eps of 1920 i will consider 150000 shares from today only i will consider 150000 shares from 1419 only and i will uh, will give the weight of 12 by 12 in 1920 also i will cal calculate the, the eps considering 150 number of shares yes yes 150 number of shares even though the shares are not yet issued but it is compulsory that i will issue them but i will do it only when it is fixed it is fixed it is already fixed that how many number of shares will be issued in the future suppose it is not fixed then i will not consider them okay so to be considered while calculating beps from the date of issue of such securities however interest dividend paid on such security shall always be deducted but yes even though i am considering these as a shares in the beps from 1920 onwards but whatever the interest i will pay in the year 1920 on debentures i will i will deduct such interest from the earning also always assume that con uh, compulsory uh, the convertible instruments are not compulsory convertible if question is silent now suppose the question is silent question only says convertible debenture what will you assume is it uh, mandatory convertible compulsory convertible or optionally convertible you will always assume that it is optionally convertible okay
so guys i hope uh, these points are done with me okay now we'll come to the eps in case of right issue guys in case of right issue just remember one word right factor right factor now what is that right factor right factor means come right price come right price divided by x right price okay x right price now why we are calculating this right factor right factor once you have calculated you need to multiply this right factor with the number of shares outstanding before right for the calculation of basic earning per share just multiply this right factor with the number of shares existing before right issue okay and do not multiply with the number of shares after right issue i will give you one example but before that what is this uh, right factor what is come right price and x right price technically in the question uh, the come right price must be given to you okay come right price is given to you let us just uh, uh, follow one question now in this question what it says that the company has a capital of the company has a capital of 1.58 million ordinary shares of 10 each all right profit is so and so all right the company made a right issue of one for every four share at rupees 30 the market price of the share immediately before the right issue is 60 now this 60 is known as come right what is the market price of the share before right issue is the come right price now this is the come right price technically okay now what the company is uh, announcing company is announcing one right issue for every four share one for every four so four is basically the existing number of shares and one is the new right share so how to calculate the x right price for calculating x right price we have a formula formula is what come uh, fair value come right that means uh, uh, 60 rupees into number of shares outstanding before right so these are these are four number of shares because for every four share i will give you one so for every four share the value of the come right price is 60 plus and uh, what is the right issue proceed as far as the right issue proceed is concerned right issue proceed means i am giving you one right share at a rupees of 30 so the right issue proceed becomes for one right issue i will give i will i will issue at 30 rupees and in total in total there will be five shares so four shares are already there one share will be issued as a right share at rupees 30 so this becomes the right issue proceed those four shares having a come right value of 60 divided by total number of shares matlab 5 you will get the x right price and the x right price would be 60 into 4 plus 30 divided by 5 matlab 54 so 54 is the x right price now you got the x right price so what is the formula of right factor right factor is equal to come right price divided by x right price now you got the you got the you got the right factor now now just remember only one thing that multiply the right factor with only the number of share outstanding before right but do not multiply the right factor with number of shares uh, outstanding after the right now let me show you one example on this the same example now let's continue with the same example how many number of shares we already have before right issue uh, 1.8 and uh, when we have made the right issue for 31st march 1 for 4 so now please try to understand what is the current year earning the current year earning is 8 lakh 75000 so 8 lakh 75000 is the numerator whole divided by we have 1.8 million shares 1.8 million shares before right issue so we have to multiply the right factor and the right factor is come right divided by x right into into time weight now time weight see this is a calendar year guys in this question this is a calendar year so technically january february march because on 31st march we are issuing new shares so 3 months into 3 by 12 okay then after right issue 1.8 million plus how many number of right issue are there one for every four so 1.8 divided by 4 1.8 divided by 4 that means 0.45 so after right issue the shares will be 1.8 plus 0.45 the total share would be 2.25 total share will be 2.25 number this is numbers now multiply directly the time weight that is 9 by 12 i do not need to i haven't i i i i, I don't need to make i do not have to make multiplication of right factor again so just multiply the right factor just multiply the right factor with the number of shares outstanding before right issue okay and do the weighted average like this so you will get the eps understood all right so you will get the eps so this is only the formula of eps what is the formula of eps numerator in denominator number of shares before right multiply by right factor into time weight plus number of shares after right number of shares after right means before right plus right issue into time weight so multiply the right factor only with the number of shares before right and uh, uh, into time weight and you will get the eps of current year 
Now, EPS of previous year also you have to restate. Yes, EPS of previous year also you have to restate. Then, for calculating the previous year restated EPS, multiply the same rate factor with the previous year share also. Multiply the same rate factor with the previous year uh, uh, number of shares. So, previous year earning was 630. So, what will you do? 630. 630 number of divided by previous year there was 1.8 million shares only so multiply the right factor 60 divided by 54 and make a time weight 12 by 12 because in last year there was only 1.8 shares uh, during the whole year so just calculate the restated eps as under uh, in the in the same way understood or not so what you need to understand for the right issue just focus on right factor multiply the right factor with the number of shares outstanding before right in the current year and in the pre previous year i hope you got the point this was the point of right issue now let us come to the so let's come to the diluted earning per share part now first of all the most important basic thing you should understand that for di for calculating diluted earning per share you should know about the potential equity shares now you must ask what is potential equity share well it's very simple Potential equity shares are those securities like debentures, preference shares, share warrant, share options. These are the securities which will be converted into equity shares or which may be converted into equity shares in the future. Okay. And because of their conversion, because of their conversion, the denominator, the weighted average numbers becomes increases. Understood. And not only this, this this results into the decrease of existing basic earning per share. See, in the basic earning per share, what we take? The numerator earning available for equity shareholder divided by denominator, the ordinary equity shares. Ordinary equity shares means the equity shares technically, which are already the equity shares. But in calculating DEPS, the idea is ki, uh, whenever we, con we, we convert all these securities in the future into equity shares, the number of ordinary equity share will get increase. Okay, and okay, it's right. It's it's fine that number of ordinary shares will get increase, but because of the increase, the earning should also increase, na? But the main point to understand is the denominator will get increase because of their conversion. Because of their conversion, because of the conversion of securities into equity shares, the denominator will get increase, but the numerator may not get increase or if it get increase it is not increased by so much value that it will create the uh, the the uh, increase in basic earning per share so ultimately the total effect is your earning per share of the future because of the conversion of securities into equity shares your earning per share of the future may get decrease. So, what will be the decreased EPS that is called diluted earning per share. So, by uh, presenting diluted earning per share entity just want to let everybody know that okay the current EPS is fine but our current EPS may also get reduced because of some securities because they are due for conversion in the future and because they will due for conversion into equity they will not help us to increase our earning got that point or not so first of all what is DEPS diluted earning per share Sorry, when to calculate DEPS? When the entity has outstanding potential equity shares. So, DEPS will be calculated only when you have potential equity shares. These are the some examples of potential equity shares. Convertible preference shares, convertible debentures, share warrants, options outstanding. What are the options outstanding? ESOPs, technically. Partly paid shares, if not entitled for dividend. I, I told you earlier that if the partly paid shares are not entitled for dividend and in future they will be entitled for dividend, then right now they are technically the potential equity shares. You have to consider them in DEPS. And other than that, the contingently issuable shares. Now, we'll discuss each and every part one by one. Now, first of all, your uh, the most important part is the calculation part of the DEPS. How to calculate the DEPS? So, for calculating DEPS, you have to apply all these steps. Now, to be very frank, it is not a point where I must, uh, uh, I should discuss it and you will understand. No, it's not that kind. It, it's not that kind of easy thing. Okay. So, I may, I, I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll take some example. I have some example now because this example I am discussing. So you can expect expect that we can uh, we can have 10 minutes more in this video. So just listen to this example if you are not good at DEPS things. Okay. 
Now, suppose concentrate on the example. Uh, you can take the screenshot of the example after this discussion. Don't worry. Now, you have E A E S H means earning attributable for equity shareholders. But look, numerator, numerator for the basic earning per share, you have 30 lakh. This is the earning for equity shares. 22, 23 is the financial year. Beginning of the financial year, you have ordinary equity, 1 lakh 50,000 numbers. On 1422 only, you have some convertible debentures. Matlab, you have potential equity shares. This is the potential equity shares. Uh, 16 lakh potential uh, pot convertible debentures at the rate of 7%. These are due for conversion after 3 years. These are due for conversion after 3 years. Now, please assume that these are not compulsory convertible. Please assume they are optionally convertible. Because if they get compulsory convertible, we will consider them in BEPS working only. Okay. So, after 3 years, they may convert it into... Uh, 80,000 equity shares. One more thing, we issued some other securities also on 1st June. We issued 9% convertible preference shares of 20 lakh rupees, face value 20. They will be converted in the future in the ratio of 1 is to 5. 1 is to 5 means for every 5, we will give them 1 share. For every 5, we will give them 1 equity share. And once again, we issued some share warrants. Share warrants are also potential equity shares because issuing share warrant means taking the money right now, but we will give you shares in the future. So, 25,000 share warrants we issued and on 1st February, these share warrants have actually become the share equity share. So, we issued share warrant on uh, uh, September, but it become the actual equity share in the month of February. Okay, now calculate the basic earning per share and diluted earning per share and the tax rate is 25%. Now, please, please see it clearly. EASH for basic earning per share, EASH is given 30 lakh. Now, for basic earning per share, you just need ordinary equity share. Now, what is the ordinary equity share? This is the one ordinary equity share, first of all. This is the one ordinary equity share, first of all. And this is not ordinary equity share. These are, these are the debentures will be converted after three years. These are the preferentials will be converted after some time, after, not in the current year. These are the share warrants. Right now, these are not ordinary, but on February, on first February, they become the ordinary equity shareholders. Okay. So, in basic earning per share working, they become the ordinary equity shares from with effect from 1st February. So, I will take the wait, time wait of 2 months, February and March. So, for calculating basic earning per share, I was having 1,50,000 numbers. Then, uh, some shares were converted from share warrant, they converted into number of shares on 1st February. So, the time weight, time weight would be like this, uh, 150 into 12 by 12 and 25,000 into 2 by 12. 30 lakh is the new meter. Ultimately, we got a basic earning per share of 19.46. I hope this calculation got clear, okay? You, you must got clear by this calculation. Now, now there's a time to understand about potential equity shares. What are the potential equity shares? See, these are the potential equity shares. These are the potential equity shares. Even the share warrant are also potential only for... September to 31st of January. Only for September to 31st of January, these are potential. Okay, because from January, uh, sorry, because from, from February onwards, they become ordinary. But before February, they were share warrants, but they were potential. Now, we have to check their duration of the potentiality in the current year. So, as far as these convertible debentures are concerned, these convertible debentures are concerned, uh, what is the issue as far as convertible debentures are concerned? Uh, these were outstanding from beginning and they will be converted after three years. So, technically, uh, during the whole, uh, my, during the, uh, in the entire year of 12 months, they were potential. They were not converted into ordinary equity. Equity, it, it means for the entire 12 months, they were, they were potential equity for the 12 months. They were potential equity for 12 months. Are you guys under understanding or not? So, debentures, 12 months, they are potential equity. Now, come to the point, second number, uh, preferential. You, we, we issued the preferential on 1st June. That means, on April and May, there was no potential. And we issued them on 1st June. Even they are also convertible, but their conversion date is not written. So, we will assume that they will be converted in the future year. Okay. So, in the current year, they issue, we issued them on 1st June. And till 31st March, they were outstanding as a potential. So, for 10 months. So, technically, preference shares are also potential equity for 10 months. And for as far as uh, share warrant are concerned, they were potential from September to 31st of January. That means... Uh, September, October, November, December and January. Five months and January. Okay. So, they were potential only and only for five months. They were potential only and only for five months. Guys, are you understanding or not? Are you understanding or not? So, these are the potential. These are the potential equity shares. These are the potential equity shares and their potentiality 
was outstanding for 12 months, 10 months, and 5 months. You have you you have to calculate their potentiality number of months. Okay. Now, how to know that the above instruments are dilutive or anti-dilutive? Now, what do you mean by dilutive? Dilutive means they have the capability. All these potential equity shares have the capability of reducing my EPS. And if they have the capability of reducing my EPS, they are dilutive potential equity shares. And if they have the capability of increasing my EPS, they are anti-dilutive. So potential equity shares may be dilutive, may be anti-dilutive. They have the potential of potential. They have the potential of decreasing the EPS or increasing the EPS. I got, you must got the point. Now. For this, we shall calculate what 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 we shall calculate. First of all, we shall calculate the incremental EPS. First of all, we shall calculate the incremental EPS for each and every potential share. Sir, what is this incremental? Calculate the EPS only for debenture, then calculate the EPS only for preference, then calculate the EPS only for share warrant. I'll tell you how. First of all. Calculate incremental EPS considering convertible debenture only. Now, convertible debenture, numerator and denominator. What should the numerator? What is the earning on debenture? What is the earning on debenture? The earning on the debenture is interest. So, they are 7 percent now. So, let me check the question 16 lakh, 16 lakh into 7 percent, 16 lakh into 7 percent. So, technically, the interest is 1 lakh 12,000. So, what is the earning on debenture? It's 1 lakh 12,000. But that interest definitely would be tax deductible. It would be tax deductible technically. So please tell me, please tell me, once they become, see, technically, once they become ordinary equity, these debentures, once they become ordinary equity, the entire earning of this 1 lakh 12,000 belongs to equity shareholders only because the interest would be saved. Isn't it? Tell me, isn't it? Frankly speaking, when the debentures will be converted, you will not pay them ca uh, interest. So, that this much amount would be saved and this much amount would be the part of equities earning. So, if this much amount would be saved, the tax will be charged on this much amount because it is not deductible. Now then, okay, so on this earning, the tax would be charged by 25%. So, only 75% will be saved. Understood? Only 75% would be saved. Divided by when the convertible debentures will be issued, uh, will be converted into shares, 80,000 equity shares will be converted. 80,000 uh, equity shares we have to issue and these were potential for 12 months. So, I am taking a time weight of 12 by 12. I hope you got the point. So, I got the answer. So, I got the answer as 1.05. Now, this 1.05 is the incremental EPS for debenture. In the same way, I calculate incremental EPS for preference share. How? Preference share gives you the dividend earning. So, when the preference share will be converted into equity, the preference dividend would be saved. Understood? So, the preference dividend would be saved on 20 lakh, 9%, 10 months preference dividend must have been paid in the current year. See, in the current year, we issued the preference dividend on 1st June. So, technically, the dividend from 1st June only we have to pay. Na? So, how much, how many months dividend must be saved? 150,000, which we have actually paid for the current year. So, in the current year, we may have paid, we must have paid preference dividend of 150,000. But once these preference shares will be converted into equity, this dividend would be saved. All right. But here the tax impact will be zero because the dividend is all, the, the, the dividend is saved and dividend is not actually tax deductible. So, technically, the entire 150 will be the part of equi uh, equities earning divided by when these preference shares will be converted into equity, how many equity shares will be issued? Let us check. The equity share will be issued 1 is to 5. Matlab for every 5, I will issue 1 share. So, 20 lakh divided by face value. 20 lakh divided by face value means 20,000. 20,000 divided by 20,000 divided by 5, it's 4,000. So, I will give you 4,000 shares once 4,000 equity shares, once the preference shares will be converted. So, 4,000 shares, 4,000 shares, 4,000 shares would be issued, 4,000 equity shares would be issued and what was the time, uh, what was the potentiality period? 10 months. So, I will give the 10 months time weight, 4,000 into 10 by 12. Okay. And I calculated it, it come to 45 rupees. So, it is called incremental EPS. Now, the third one, share warrant. When the share warrant will get converted into equity, the earning is all is zero. See, in the share warrant, it is uh, uh, share warrant doesn't carry any percentage. So, earning is always zero uh, in the share warrant divided by number of share. When they will convert it into equity share, they, the equity share would be 25,000. And what was the potentiality period? 5 months. So, into 5 divided by 12. So, it becomes the answer becomes zero. 
<coughs> sorry <coughs> so what i did i calculated incremental eps by calculating incremental eps now i have to arrange it in a increasing order now the lowest one is zero though i will i will treat it as a first rank i will give it as a first rank first rank then the second rank is here 1.05 and the third rank is this now ranking means what ranking means this share warrant is the most dilutive potential equity share most dilutive means it will definitely reduce my existing basic earning per share this is also dilutive because it is very low 1.05 so it will definitely reduce my basic earning per share but looking at the answer of 45 oh my god this is this can be the anti dilutive also so why i am giving the ranking because i should know which one is dilutive and which one is non dilutive so how to calculate the dilutive non dilutive part for that you have to calculate the incremental eps you can take the screenshot don't worry i will give it to you don't worry even i will the, the, the this sheet this entire example i will give you uh, in the description also don't worry now the the example is not yet over by making ranks now we will calculate the deps for calculating deps first we start with basic earning per share in basic earning per share we took 30 lakh as a numerator and we took denominator as 154 166 if you don't remember then please check this out 115 into 12 by 12 for 25,000 into 2 by 12. So it was actually 154, 166, and the answer was 19.46. Now in this BPS with the ranking system, first of all we will take the first rank potential item. The first rank potential item is share warrant. Now consider the share warrant. It is diluted. Why? Because the numerator is zero. Denominator you will take 10, 416. How 10, 416? The weighted average. 25 into 5 by 12. When you will consider this only, only this. Only this, only this. When you will consider this only, the numerator will be thirty lakh. The denominator will be added like one sixty four, and the EPS will be reduced to eighteen point two three. Now you can check that from uh, from nineteen point four six. From nineteen four four six, my EPS has been reduced to eighteen point two three. This is the power of potential equity share if it is dilutive. So dilutive potential equity share reduces my BEPS. Okay, but anti-dilutive doesn't reduce my BEPS. Now I'll take the second rank. Second rank is convertible debenture. What is the numerator? What is the denominator? Numerator and denominator. One twelve into seventy-five percent means eighty-four thousand, and eighty uh, thousand uh, into twelve by twelve means eighty thousand. So this one and this one I took, I added it, and then I again tried to calculate the EPS, and I got twelve point six one. Oh my God! Again, it reduced. Again, my basic earning per share reduced. See, my basic earning per share is getting reduced because of share warrant and because of convertible debenture. It is also dilutive because it is reducing my DEPS. Now, the last one, preference preference share. Preference share earning is one fifty and the and the denominator is forty thousand four thousand into ten by twelve. So earning is one fifty and then triple three after the weighted average. Then again, I try to calculate the EPS. Instead of reducing the EPS, it increases my EPS. 13.04 it becomes that means it is not the dilutive one it is anti dilutive and india says if there is a anti dilutive potential equity share do not consider them your answer final answer should be 12.61 so the diluted earning per share should be 12.61 now this is what actually i wanted to explain you through the example so now if you refer my chart book once again What is the step number one? Step number one is identify potential equity shares first. In the example, we identified that we have three potential equity shares: uh, debentures, preference shares, and share warrants. And along with that, we identified the potentiality period. Okay, then, okay, we identified the potential equity shares. Then calculate the incremental EPS for every single potential equity share and arrange in the increasing order. Calculate for every single potential equity share. Calculate the calculate the incremental EPS and arrange them in the increasing order ranking system. Okay, we also did that. We calculated and we arranged it. Okay, then apply the test of dilution. This is the this is test of dilution. Technically, this is test of dilution. Test of dilution. So we have applied the test of dilution. Ha, huh, test each potential equity share on B EPS for continuing operation. If EPS declines from preceding calculation, then it is called diluted EPS. See, B EPS declining, B EPS declining. That means these are the 
these are the potential dilutive one okay and if eps increases from pre uh, preceding calculation then it is anti dilutive so uh, th this this preference is a anti dilutive potential equity share i will not consider it in my deps uh, calculation so my final answer would be 12.61 so how i explained this point in the form of example now you got that okay if you want to take the screenshot if you want to take the screenshot, you just can take the screenshot. I will give you. Okay, take the screenshot. <coughs> okay, I am changing the page. You can also pause the video. Don't worry. Okay, I am once again change pause changing. All right, the last one. fine so that was the calculation part of the diluted earning per share i hope you got the point now okay uh, now come to the third part diluted earning per share under call options issued sir what are the call options call options mean suppose entity has given you one call option that uh, uh, the market price of the share is 50 rupees i am giving you call option to purchase or to subscribe the share at 40 rupees tell me will you subscribe if I will give you one option to purchase my company share at 40 rupees and originally in the market it is it has a market value of 50 rupees. Tell me will you purchase? So definitely I will because the market price is 50 and you are giving me at 40. So definitely I will purchase sir. In that case it is called in the money option. Now reverse it. Reverse the situation. Suppose I, I, I offered you to purchase my company share at 60 rupees. But in the market, the market price is the 50 rupees. Will you purchase from me? Obviously not. Of course not. Because in the market, it is selling at 50 and I am giving you the option to purchase, purchase from me directly at 60. Why will you purchase it to, from me? So definitely it is called out of the money option. So whenever the call option is issued by the company, yes, sometimes the company issues call options to its existing shareholders for, subscribe, for subscription of more equity shares. Understood or not? So these call options are also known as potential equity shares. See, these are the call, uh, it is written, uh, options. So call options are also known as, call options are also known as potential equity shares. Potential. Potential equity shares. But they are potential equity shares and they are dilutive potential only when the market price is higher and the offered price is lower. Of course. Of course, the market price is higher and the offered price is lower. Definitely, I can expect that you will try to exercise the uh, exercise the offer. And if you are going to exercise the offer, definitely I will issue the share. And in future, if I will issue the share, it will become the potential. It is right now. It is a potential equity share. So, what is potential? Potential means technically it is right now not an ordinary share, but in future it will be the ordinary share or it may be the ordinary share. So, how to calculate the potential equity part? How to calculate the potential equity part in case of call options? So, let me just give you one example. Let me just give you one example. Uh, if I tell you one thing, if I tell you one thing that uh, I give you call options, call options of 5000 numbers at 40 rupees, at 40 rupees. Market price is 50 rupees. Technically, it is in the money, in the money. Okay, so now what I will do, 50,000 into, if I will give you shares of 5,000 5, at 40, so how much funds it will be, how much funds it will be? It will be 2 lakh rupees. Suppose same 2 lakh rupees, same 2 lakh rupees could have been issued in the market at 50, could have been issued in the market at 50, divided by 50. So technically, if the same funds could have been issued in the market. I would have issued only, I, I could have issued just 4,000 numbers. So technically, by giving you option on 5,000 numbers, I am getting 2 lakh rupees, which is equivalent to 4,000 numbers. So technically, I am providing you free shares, free shares of 1,000 numbers. And these free shares, I will provide you in the future. So these are actually, these are actually potential equity and they are dilutive why they are potential equity because by issuing them in future i will not get any extra money see 
by issuing overall 5000 shares i will get the money i will get the funds but i will get the funds only equivalent to 4000 numbers so what are potential equity shares potential equity shares are those shares when they were if they will be issued you will not get any extra money so these are 1000 potential shares and these are dilutive because they will reduce your earning per share because by issuing 1000 shares no earning will be increased only the denominator will be incre increased are you understanding or not so see this in the money options exercise price is lower than market price exercise price 40 lower than market price 50 total number of options if you re if you remember 5000 non dilutive portion 4000 sir what is non dilutive non dilutive means means by issuing them in the future we will get the money we will get the funds these are non dilutive so you will calculate like this so the uh, so so how to calculate the potential part potential dilutive part in this way Anna, you can take the a screenshot if you want take this take the screenshot Alright, you can pause the video and take the screenshot. Now, if you want to take the screenshot of this one, take the screenshot. Alright, so these are the things. These are the things. I hope, I hope uh, you got the point. If you want to take the screenshot once again, please take it. Okay. Alright, now come to the next portion. Contingently issuable shares. Now, what is this contingently issuable shares? In future, I may issue you some additional equity shares on a condition that uh, you will do this, you will do that, the performance will be so and so and like that. If that condition will be completed, if that condition will be fulfilled, I will give you the shares. So, these are the contingently issuable shares. So, issued for little or no cash or other consideration. Like, I will give you extra shares and without any consideration or for little consideration on the satisfaction of specified conditions. Now, to be included in the working of DEPS if not yet issued but condition on satisfied, condition satisfied on balance sheet date. Suppose on balance sheet date, balance sheet date means year ending or quarter ending. So, on balance sheet date when you want to calculate the earning per share for your company, suppose on balance sheet date the condition is already satisfied but you haven't yet issued them still the contingently issuable share is not actually issued but the condition is already satisfied on balance sheet date technically these are becoming the potential equity one thing about these contingently issuable share you should understand that suppose this is the timeline now in this timeline here contingently issuable shares are offered 1st April, 30th June condition not satisfied, 30th September condition satisfied, 31st December shares actually issued. Now, when you will calculate here, when you will calculate the basic earning per share and diluted per share per share on 30th 6, you will not consider contingently issuable shares because they are not ordinary shares, even they are not potential because the condition is not satisfied. If the condition is not yet satisfied, satisfied, you will not consider them in any working, whether it is basic or diluted. Now, on 30th September, once again, 30th September balance sheet date, you have to calculate the earning per share for the quarter. So, while calculating earning per share, you will not consider them in the basic earning per share, but you will consider them in the diluted earning per share because the condition is unsatisfied. Now, since the condition is satisfied, that means in future they are going to be issued. If they are going to be issued, you have to consider them. And once the shares are actually issued, you will consider them under basic earning per share working. Guys, understood or not? You can take the screenshot of this also. Please take it immediately. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. So, these are the contingently issuable shares. I hope you got the point. Now, ESOPs. ESOPs work same like these call option. Same to same. Same to same. ESOP. Types of ESOP. First of all, there are two. There can be two types of ESOP. ESOP based on service conditions. ESOP based on performance condition. If they are service condition, like after three years, I will give you the shares. After two years, I will give you the shares. Okay. And these are for, uh, some ESOPs are based on performance condition. Like if the company's performance will be so and so, net profit will be so and so, then only we will give you ESOP. ESOP will be issued to the employees. So, performance based ESOP 
आर नोन एज कॉन्टिजेंटली इश्यूएबल शेयर दीज आर एज गुड एज कॉन्टिजेंटली इश्यूएबल शेयर सिंस अचीवमेंट इज परफॉर्मेंस is a contingent event it may or may not happen therefore the esop are treated as contingently issuable shares but esop based on service only that you just saw me for 3 years i will give you the shares so they are considered in the deps working just like these call options just like call options see in the call option what i told you the exercise price is 40 rupees the market price is 50 so i gave the uh, i offered my employee one uh, the, the some of the shares at 40 and the market price was 50 so technically again in the same way you have to calculate the potential dilutive portion so same how to calculate the potential equity shares for the eps working total number of esop minus esop against as per the fair consideration fair consideration means what same like in this working what i told you that same 2 lakh rupees if it had been issued at 50 rupees only 4000 could have been issued so uh, minus 4000 so number of potential shares 1000 will be there esop issued against fair consideration is calculated as under total options into exercise price divided by fair value total options 5000 options are given exercise price 40 fair value 50 so we will get the esop issued uh, uh, against fair consideration and you will deduct it from the total esop you will get the potential shares okay and same you have to take them under the deps working so for deps working these all were the things finally last but not the least it is entity with discontinued operation now this is a special case you must know that while preparing profit and loss statement we show our continuing business separately we show our continuing business separately we show our discontinued operation separately and i told you also that you have to calculate eps for continuing discontinued and total business now now remember just one thing if there is a loss in continuing operation what i am saying if even don't look at this chart if there is a loss in continuing operation what is the condition if there is a loss in continuing operation लॉस इन कंटिन्यूंग ऑपरेशन ठीक है ना इफ देर इज अ लॉस इन कंटिन्यूंग ऑपरेशन देन वाइल कैलकुलेटिंग डीपीएस वाइल कैलकुलेटिंग डीपीएस डू नॉट कंसिडर पोटेंशियल इक्विटी शेयर कंसिडर Ordinary equity shares. Okay. Sir, why so? Sir, why you are telling this? Okay. Let me give you one example. See, see, continuing operation profit ten lakh. If I calculate basic earning per share, ten lakh divided by ten thousand numbers, ordinary numbers. For example, it's. 10 lakh divided by 10,000, it's 100 rupees. For calculating DEPS, let us say same 10 lakh divided by uh, 10,000 numbers ordinary. Suppose I have potential equity shares 5,000. Okay, so 10 lakh divided by 15,000. So my uh, diluted earning per share becomes 66.67. It's not an issue. कोई दिक्कत नहीं है. Problem? There is no problem because here is a profit, not an issue. But I told you if there is a loss, if there is a loss. <laughs> so in case of loss so let's take an example of loss instead of profit there's a loss of 10 lakh so while calculating beps the 10 lakh divided by 10000 so 10 lakh divided by 10000 it's technically 100 100 negative 100 the beps is negative 100 okay now in deps if you calculate 10 lakh minus and divided by Divide by ten thousand as well as five thousand. Five thousand are the potential. Five thousand are the potential part. Okay. Suppose if I took five fifteen thousand. Now what is my answer? The answer would be same, na? Sixty six point six seven. But this sixty six point six seven is a negative, na? Now please compare. You are saying it is a diluted earning per share. No. When it was a positive, okay, hundred reduced to sixty six. But when it was a loss, basic earning per share was negative hundred. Now, by considering five thousand extra potential, it becomes negative sixty-six. That means it's a good situation. It has a 
बिकॉज नाउ माय बेसिक अर्निंग पर शेयर इंस्टेड ऑफ गेटिंग रिड्यूस्ड इट इज इंक्रीज माय डियर मैथमेटिकली इट इज इंक्रीज नेगेटिव हंड्रेड इज वर्स्ट इट्स वर्स देन सिक्सटी नेगेटिव राइट दैट मीन्स बाय कंसिडरिंग पोटेंशियल इक्विटी my dps has been increased my dps has been increased it is it is increased as compared to basic earning per share oh acha and this is the reason you should not consider potential equity shares when you have loss and continuing operation so in case a loss you do not consider the uh, consider the uh, diluted earning per share only consider ordinary share this is just the important working if even if you are not considering this portion do not consider it even i am going to change this thing uh, because it is it is quite uh, uh, extra things uh, written in there so just consider these two things uh, all right now in days 33 is over but before concluding the session i have one more thing to discuss i have one more thing to discuss and there are one or two examples in ici module that is called participating ordinary equity shares and preference shares now what is this participating equity shares and preference shares let us read it sometimes instruments generally preference shares participate in the undistributed earnings available after the payment of equity dividend <coughs> wait hello hmm. simple for example see we all know that uh, preference shares are eligible for dividend before equity but once the preference dividend has been paid to them the entire earning belongs to equity but suppose there are participating preference shares participating preference shares means even after the payment of preference dividend whatever is remaining that is not only for equity the if out of the entire earning suppose if we are giving some dividend to equity shareholders and then the remaining portion is undistributed earning so from undistributed earning they will participate in the in that un undistributed earning how see this preference shares are eligible for 2 rupees per share dividend also they are entitled to additional dividend after the payment of equity dividend in proportion of 1 by 3 comparison to equity holders now they will get their fixed 2 rupees per share dividend then whatever the earning remaining from that earning equity dividend will be paid to equity shareholders once the equity dividend will be, will be paid the uh, out of the remaining earning they will be entitled to 1 by 3 portion in comparison to the equity holders now equity dividend suppose we announce the dividend for equity as 3 rupees per share dividend suppose the total profit after tax becomes 15 lakhs now what will you do outstanding preference shares are 1 lakh 50000 number and share, equity shares are 2 lakh 50000 number now out of 15 lakh how much preference dividend fixed 2 rupees So two rupees into one fifty, मतलब three lakh. So three lakh will be the dividend for preference shares, and two lakh fifty thousand equity shares into three equity dividend. That means seven lakh fifty thousand number dividend. Seven uh, lakh fifty thousand rupees of dividend for equity shares. Now look at the uh, look at the working total earning fifteen lakhs. Out of this total earning, preference dividend is deducted three lakh. Then equity dividend is deducted seven fifty. Now this becomes the undistributed earning four fifty. And on this undistributed earning, preference dividend will participate. preference and equity holders both are entitled for the undistributed earning now what is the uh, what is the preference one by uh, they will entitled for one third in comparison to equity matlab what equity will get they will get one third okay suppose equity shareholders are entitled to x rupees per share of the additional dividend preference will be entitled for 1 by 3x so what so out of the additional earning if i am giving 1 rupee to equity they will preference will get 1 by 3 if i am giving 3 rupees preference will get One by मतलब one by three मतलब one rupees. So if equity shareholders are eligible for suppose I, if I am paying x per per share to equity shareholders out of the additional dividend additional earning, they uh, the preference shareholders will be eligible for one by three x. Okay. So now x per share of two lakh fifty thousand numbers. This is the x per share, na? This is x per share, and this is two by two lakh fifty thousand numbers. Plus 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 one by three x is for the per share preference shares, and this is one lakh fifty thousand numbers. So in overall undistributed earning, this portion is for equity, this portion is for preference. If you solve the x, the x will become one point five. 
Now x will become 1.5. That means equity shoulders is 1.5 per additional dividend and preference will be 1.5 per additional dividend. Now what is the basic earning per share for both of them? For equity, the basic earning per share is 3 rupees. Originally, 3 rupees. 3 rupees was the dividend. And additionally, it is 1.5 rupees. Additionally, 1.5. So total milake overall basic earning per share is 4.5. For preference shoulders, what is the earning per share? Uh, 2 rupees and 0.5, it is 2.5. Understood or not, we only consider ordinary equity share. So technically, uh, uh, basic earning per share will be calculated like this. If you want to take the screenshot of this example, please take. You can take the screenshot right now also. So guys, take the screenshot and uh, let me tell you one thing that we have completed our India's 33 portion successfully. And I believe that you have enjoyed the session, right? First of all, take the screenshot. All right, so I believe that you must have enjoyed this session and if you do, if you have enjoyed the session, please try to try to like and share this lecture. Please, please, please and do comment your feedback, share with your friends, like, like this uh, particular video and subscribe it for the future videos. All right, so guys, all the very best for the exams. Do not forget to check the description box for the additional details for the for the top important 164 questions all right thanks a lot guys thanks a lot thank you so much bye bye take care jai mata di allah